everybody welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today welcome to all my new subscribers uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you do perhaps you will go ahead and like this video share it and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will not miss a future upload so I am coming in today to talk about this denim jacket I am wearing the fabric the pattern all of that I'm so excited about it uh, but first let me address <clears throat> a couple of administrative things so first of all I pray that everyone is doing well and you are staying safe um, wherever you are in the world as for our household we are doing well um, we're we're able to get whatever necessities that uh, we needed um, I am fortunate enough that I have a job that I am able to work from home so our company has switched to a work from home um, policy uh, for the distant future um, and so I do I am grateful for uh, this opportunity during this time but um, yeah let's just continue to keep our families and friends uh, um, in our prayers and um, help those as we can um, if we are able um, so the other thing is uh, coming up on Sunday I do have a special video for you but also remember the sew alongs will be starting um, we have the um, pattern by mrs h the sling bag i will pop that up here that will start on monday it's a two-day video um it'll be monday and tuesday so i'm gonna do those back to back um those videos will go up monday and tuesday so very simple supply list and everything it's a free pattern so go ahead and download it and dig in your stash for the couple items that you'll need um to get um to do that pattern and join me for that so along secondly will be the following week will be the cashmere upton so along that will be a i believe three day video it will start that following sunday monday and tuesday the last sunday monday tuesday of march so you will have that so make sure if you have not gotten your pattern go ahead and grab your pattern i'll link links to both of the patterns down below um they are they are not affiliate links at all but you can go down and click on those links to purchase your patterns um and yeah come join me for both of those so alongs so let's get into this now i must say I cannot recall, I'm sure I have, but I cannot recall for the life of me. I don't think I ever owned a denim jacket. And again, if I did, maybe I was in my teens or something I just don't remember. Um, but I cannot ever recall owning a denim jacket in my adult life. I don't know why, because I do like them. Um, but i absolutely love this denim jacket this is one of my wardrobe staples for all of those who saw my video on sunday thank you so much for your comments i'm glad that video was helpful and useful um i know there's a lot of different terminology used in our sewing community but just um taking a step back figuring out what's best for you and going down that path is the most ideal way in use of your time um, but this is what I consider to go into my wardrobe staples and it is this denim jacket which I lo I love this jacket let's get into the jacket first let me address the fabric the fabric is um, this is a review for the Minerva.com some fabric that was sent to me and I am um, doing a review the blog post will go up soon um, I'll share that if you follow me over on Facebook I will share when the blog post goes up and on Instagram, I'll share when it is available out on Minerva.com. But if you are interested in this type of denim, which I'll talk about, I did go back out to the website and just to make sure it was still available. And it is. It is a stretch denim um, in the fabric indigo blue. And um, it is 60 inches wide. And it is a polyester cotton elastine um, fiber mix. So... Um, that's the composition of the fabric i will leave a link to the fabric down below again not an affiliate link um just so you know if you are interested in getting it is looking like on the website is going for 6.99 a meter so yeah go check it out it might be something that you would be interested in i will say when i received the fabric i initially online when i looked at it i had i think i had a totally different project in mind i think some jeans and um maybe a dress i think was my initial 
thinking for the um, fabric when it came or uh, when I ordered it however when it came it did not look the way I thought it would and so let me just show see if I can show you what I am talking about it has I don't know if the hopefully the camera will focus yeah if you can tell it has what looks like fuzzies I don't know if that's the right term. <laughs> it's not a smooth denim. It has like this fuzzy texture to it. And so um, when that came, I was like, ooh, no, I don't think I, I don't want that as a dress on me or denim jeans on me. I wanted then something that I would take off frequently, not something I had to wear all day because I didn't like that that feel for that particular the garments I was thinking of so then I was going to do as you all um, know and let me grab the pattern as you all know I had switched and was going to do this jacket but and I cut it out and everything in this denim thank goodness I had ordered quite a bit because I was planning on doing two other projects but um, the pattern was all wonky and so I couldn't even um work that one out to finish it however there was still enough left for me to squeeze out when i say squeeze out it's just scraps of this fabric left now but to squeeze out this denim jacket which takes about i want to say almost three yards um to do depending on if you're doing pockets well pockets you use a different type of fabric but or you can use the denim and um tabs but those are minimal pieces that you would um, need to cut out so I was grateful that I was still able to do something with the fabric was left so I can do a proper review. And so um, for me, something that I could take off that jacket or this here and not leave on my body um, because once I got it, I didn't really care for that fuzzy feeling to the denim. Um, but for a jacket on and off, perfect perfect for that so let's get into the jacket i will pop up some pictures um somewhere throughout the video so make sure that you're um watching um so you can see those let me get into this pattern now this pattern is the rebecca page kingston jacket now i will leave a link okay sorry about that the camera had cut off but <clears throat> so the link to the Rebecca page um, pattern site is down below and you can purchase this pattern that is an affiliate link and so again if you decide to shop through that link click on that link and do some shopping I do get a little bit of a commission for that just so you all know um, but so the um, Kingston jacket I ordered this and I usually on my patterns right when I've um, <clears throat> purchased patterns I didn't write it on here but I'm pretty confident I got this in early 2019 um, and so yeah not so maybe yeah because the copyright is 2017 so it was probably early 2019 when um, I actually picked this up because I knew I wanted a denim jacket um and you know it could have been even sooner because this is part of my wardrobe staples that i've talked about with the sewing fashionista meetup group here in, in houston texas that um we um part of our homework assignment was to do these wardrobe staples these items and so this is one of mine now do a roundup of all of them once they're done um and so i probably picked this up pro i'm pretty sure back in 2018 because when i was looking for a denim jacket I had the hardest time trying to find one um, in the measurements that I was uh, that I wanted to deal with. Remember, in 2018 is when I decided no more grading up. So I'm sure that's when I found this pattern and purchased it. I'm sure it was 20, sometime in 2018. And so um, because it does go in a nice size range, it, it starts from a. And let me just tell you the measurements. And these are the size measurements. So the size measurements. Um, starts at a 30 um, inch uh, bust to a up to the range 54 um, bust inch bust so yes it is a very nice large range um, and yeah let me let me get into some of the details y'all know I like to share a lot of details so I, I cut a size 4XL so a 4XL is a chest size of 49 through 51 inches a waist of 43 to 46 and hips of 52 to 54 
Now, the finished garment measurements, now here with this jacket, because it is, it is a little bit more fitted, um, you will lose a little bit of that room. So a 4XL in a, um, a uh, the inches in a 4XL finished is 50.5 in the chest, the hip, the waist is 47 and the hips is 56. So there's just not a lot of ease there, but it, there's some ease. It is meant to be a little bit more fitted. Now, if you notice, I don't know which picture I'm able to pop up, but if you can tell on this, um, she has hers completely buttoned up. And as you can tell, it is a little bit fitted here, more fitted on, on the front of the pattern. For me personally, and this is something that you can think about as well, I would never button up. I don't button up. I don't button up cardigans. I don't button up. I don't button up jackets like this or anything just because to me it feels restrictive to do that. Um, but I just like mine just to hang open. So I wasn't really... I knew I wanted to be able to move in it, obviously, but I didn't need mine to be fitted. I mean, I can button it up, and I did. And keep in mind, I've I've used a uh, denim that has a little bit of a stretch in it. Um, so, but I would never button this up. <laughs> That's just not my thing. But also, so far as cutting um, uh, the pattern pieces, now, <laughs> yes. There are a, quite a few pattern pieces. I will not lie. However, it is not bad at all. Um, quite a few of the pattern pieces, you only need to cut out one thing. It's not two of everything. Um, so like the yoke pieces are just one. It's certain pieces where you only cutting out one of what you need. So it's not that bad. And also keep in mind, all of Rebecca Page patterns have a, um, a area in the pattern where she walks you through if you want to do a muslin, the only pieces you need to cut out for your muslin. So if you're just looking to do a muslin um, first before you really dive into something like this, follow those instructions to go um, to get your muslin done first and then go through and do um, the full Monty. Um, so I did, I chose not to make a muslin. There are a total of, like I said, I think I mentioned 18 pieces um, to the pattern. Um, I did not make a muslin. I didn't necessarily feel, I didn't really feel that is necessary. I know how I saw quite a bit of Rebecca Page as, and as you know, cashmere patterns, but, um, so I didn't necessarily feel the need to do a muslin for this. And so, um, but I'm very happy the way it came out. This is my first ever jean jacket. I love it. It's plus size friendly. Um, like I said, I'll show pictures, but, and I have it on with, and see, this is how I would wear it. This is more of a dress down look. Cause you can really, you can dress up denim jackets. <laughs> you can put a nice pussy bow blouses up underneath. You can really juice them up with some jewelry. I think the picture I have is I kind of put on some costume jewelry and everything with it but casual you can wear it down with some um throw on some leggings jog jogging pants or whatever you know cute cute look um and so um yeah let, let's just get into this i i like the fit again my denim have a little bit of a little bit of stretch to it but it's not anything it's the recovery of it is good it's not like there's some stretch and then it's left baggy um and everything but it fits so well let me see if i can stand up so you can see it fits so and i like where it hits so my waist is here and it's just below this is really the fullest area of my waist where my tummy is so it hits about right there i like where it hits like i said i can button this up but i don't see the point <laughs> I, I would I, w I would just wear it like this um, and so as you can see from the back you do have the your back pieces your back side pieces your placket down the front so you can make adjustments in these areas so if you say depending on the size that you cut out you can adjust these areas in your seam allowance if you don't necessarily want to go bigger or smaller you can play around with it and that's why you will probably um, look to do a muslin there is no collar stand um, you just have the collar 
um i did use let me see i picked up these buttons these are let me see oh i have some they're called dungaree buttons for jeans and overalls from joanne fabrics and i picked these up um they had i picked up a couple packs because they had these on sale let me see if i can show you what it looks like they had these on sale you can barely see it but it has a little screw in the back you just pop it on and then hammer it down um they had these on sale for really cheap they i think they were going out of stock or something because they were marked down to like three dollars and some change um and then the thread that i used i use my top stitching thread i use guterman number 520 i use guterman number 520 for my top stitching thread and for me um I do have a couple different machines um, and so what I decided to do this is the first time ever I just want to see you know for convenience how would it be um, how would it go I actually put my top stitching thread in my Janome HD 3000 and then I sewed it up on my brother SE 400 and used my serger which is my uh, brother 1034d serger and that really did make the process more seamless <laughs> where i did i wasn't constantly because usually i just change my thread out but um that went much smoother with me just having the different machines set up with top stitching thread now my bobbin and both machines was just regular thread but i did make sure for my um Janome, i put in my uh, top stitching thread and that all seemed to work out um I did not use top stitching thread to create any of my buttonholes. I just find, um, at least, I didn't try it in my Janome. I guess I could have tried it. Um, but I know on my other machine, when I tried to put this top stitching thread in the bobbin, it just, it did not act right. <laughs> it did not like that. And so I didn't try it in my Janome. I might have to, we'll have to play around with the stitch length. Um, doing buttonholes but um but yeah but anyway so i just create all the buttonholes on my regular uh domestic machine um and so the i already told you the size i cut um one of the things you want to keep in mind if you are doing this and you are um a larger size pro i don't know what size she did mention this in a pattern so she didn't specify which size in particular so i don't know where this would come up at but um, because I cut a 4XL, you would see on the pattern where the pockets line up with this top stitching, like the top stitching from the pocket would line up on in the picture to the top stitching on the jacket. If you are cutting out a larger size, that will not line up. So don't expect it to line up. You are not doing anything wrong. It's just that um, to keep the balance of the pockets and everything and the look of the jacket is it was not shrunken down to make sure it lines up with that top stitching in the front so you have to and it says in the instructions you have to make sure that you um center those so it falls evenly even if it's outside see you can barely tell but my lines don't match up and so but i did lay them in the way that i thought it would fall you know uh, appropriately on the pattern and then one of the things there is an option in the pattern to do a lot of flat fell seams um personally and i think this is my first time doing them some parts you kind of had no choice but to do them but other areas you could do um surging and then do the fake the fake uh, <laughs> flat felt seams um this area you did have to do the flat felt seams because the way these pocket the flaps go in to this area um i will say i do not like flat felt. i don't i don't enjoy doing them so um we're and again this was my first time doing them i just think it's too fiddly and take too much time if i can get away with just surging and then um pressing the seam down and then doing the top stitching on the outside that is the route i will go um but i did do it for i think it was this section and i think it was uh, this underarm section um because the way the um the cuffs went on so yeah there were two areas where it was kind of unavoidable um and and you probably still could do the surge in over but 
since it was my first time doing the jacket where I couldn't readily figure that out. <laughs> I just followed the instructions. Um, the, the cuffs, as you can see, very simple cuff. I liked the process for putting all of this together. Again, there are um, buttons and buttonholes, not buttons, but these dungaree um, and buttonholes, which I don't know the likelihood I'm gonna close those. Even with the pockets, I have the pockets up front here with the, um, cause you have the option to do side seam pockets and these front pockets and tabs. I chose not to do the tabs cause I don't really care for that look. And also I chose not to do the side seam pockets cause I thought it would just add bulk there. Um, and besides I would never use those pockets <laughs> and these, I will never use these either. However, I just like the look of it, um, of a classic denim jacket. So I decided to just still do the front pockets here on the front um, with the buttons. And yes, these are functional pockets, but you know what? I will never use them, <laughs> but I do like the look of it. So that is just something I wanted to um, point out. I will say, oh, let me pause because I want to show you the inside of the jacket. Okay, so the inside of the jacket, let me just show that to you. So it's really simple construction with putting a collar in and laying that down. And so the reason, and I say this all the time when I do collars, the reason mine looks so neat on the inside <laughs> is because um, I use heat bond to lay, when you um, press that seam up after you attach the collar and you press the seam up and then you're supposed to go around and stitch. I always, with my collars, press that seam up and fold, fold this part over and I use heat bond to seal it all the way down first just because, just to keep it nice and neat and then I will go, go around and do the stitching. And so that's what I did with this collar. And this is the exact same thing I did, let me show you with my um cuffs as well same thing and the top stitch is on the outside of here but the same thing i went in and pressed everything up as per instructions um real good and then i put the heat bond to seal all of it to bond all of this and then i went around because i don't know why for me i don't know how it works for you all but i really struggle with making sure when I uh, stitch a collar down or something like that, it's even and it's not all wonky and I don't know, the fabric shifts or whatever. So for me, when I use the heat bond fabric, doesn't move and I'm able to, you know, do what I need to do. Um, the sleeves, I will say, go in flat. So, but there still was a little bit of easing I had to do and, um, for the sleeve, but it went in flat. There's no puckering or anything like that. But as long as you can, you know, ease it in. And so it's not like you have to put it in, set the sleeve in, which I think would have been much more challenging. So I do like the way the sleeve went in. There is top stitch, the double top stitching all around. Again, it's optional um if you choose to do that but i do love it there is a two-piece sleeve if i didn't mention that before which i also love so if you need to make sleeve adjustments at least you can do that and play around when you do your muslin doing the fit on the arm so you make sure you have the the fit is the way you want it so it is a two-piece sleeve which i do like um <clears throat> i think that is it um I absolutely love this jacket. It turned out so beautiful. And hopefully I've been popping up pictures. Um, I, I love it. Now here's the thing. I would make not a denim jacket because it's not, it's really once you, you know how sometimes when you go through these uh, patterns um, once you feel comfortable enough that, oh, okay, not a problem. I can whip out another one or do another one. I can see doing this in like a twill and um, a canvas, um, something to that nature, a different, um, a different uh, type of fabric. Because for this pattern, if I didn't show the picture, she has various, um, uh, 
views for this. You can do different types of views and I'll pop it up because I don't think you're going to be able to see it here. But you can do um, full bell sleeves. You can do half angle sleeves. You can do three quarter bell sleeves with pockets. You can do trumpet sleeves with with or without pockets and of course then the classic like i showed you which opens up a lot of opportunities to really play with this i can see going all out with either one of these adding lace trim doing lace for your trumpet sleeves or bell sleeve or doing a different type of um maybe a rayon for your sleeve and a can a, a twill or something for the main bodice i mean you really can just play with this however you want and so I love it and I'm glad I was able to use the fabric um, for something else something popped in my mind because again like I said that fuzzy I don't really care for that to wear all day I don't know if you can see it better now but yeah but it worked perfectly for this so I'm, I'm so happy I was able to get something out of the fabric since my other um idea my uh, my backup idea did not work with the other jacket so that is all i have today make sure that you tune in on sunday for the next video if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and yeah i will see you on sunday get ready for some sew alongs all right everybody stay safe and we will see you in the next video bye